Hey guys, it's your friend Kobe here, and welcome to today's video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about five things you need to know when investing in 2023. Because let's be honest, 2022 was not a great year for the stock market. Every major index ended in the red. The Dow dropped 8.8%, the S&P 500 dropped 19.4%, and the NASDAQ dropped a whopping 33.1%. And those numbers look tame when compared to some individual stock performances of Tesla, Ford, Zoom, or cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. So I'm assuming you probably had a pretty rough year as far as investments go in 2022. Or maybe you're just watching this video because you want to learn more about investing. But either way, I'm excited to share my thoughts on the five things that you need to know in 2023 to succeed in your investments. I really hope you'll walk away with some valuable insights that can make you more money by the end of the year. So grab your favorite snack, kick back, and let's get started. First, this is one of the principal rules of investing. Don't let fear keep you from making money. It seems like the headlines are always saying how bad things can be. Inflation is at all time highs, geopolitical conflicts could expand, and the market could continue to tank. Those things could all very well be true, but if you're investing now for the long term, allowing others' fears to dictate your investment decisions is just plain stupid. The common mantra of investing is to buy low and sell high. But if you let the general sentiment determine when you buy or sell your stocks, you will almost always buy high when everyone is greedy and sell low when everyone is fearful. To see how correlated fear and the stock market returns are, check this out. There's actually a fascinating tool you can use to quantify the level of fear and greed in the US market. CNN Business has an index that uses seven equally weighted indicators to quantify the level of fear or greed in the stock market. As you can see, the amount of fear or greed in the economy directly correlates with market performance. Right now at the beginning of January, we are hanging in the mid 40s in the fear quartile. This means that the general market sentiment is one of fear. You see massive tech layoffs happening and you worry that those could extend to your own job. Or let's be honest, what's probably driving the market is big investment banks fear over interest rates increasing because when interest rates rise, stock valuations fall. Now you might be thinking, Kobe, 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 I'll just invest once the market has fallen a bit more right before the Fed stops raising interest rates. And I would say, good luck with that. The smartest minds in the world try and fail to predict the stock market. But if you think you can predict it, give your predictions in the comments below and we'll see who ends up being right. No investor can know for sure when the Fed will raise rates. And if you did by some means know, that would probably be insider trading. The best way to guarantee you get the best long-term return on your investments is by dollar cost averaging into the market. This just means regularly buying into the market, whether it's high or low. This has been proven time and time again to outperform even timing the market. Is it sexy? No. Did you probably yawn when you heard dollar cost average into the market? Yeah, but it works. And the wealthiest, most successful people implement this strategy. Now you might be thinking, okay, but if I'm gonna dollar cost average in the market, what do I buy? And that leads us into the second principle. Whatever your investment strategy is, increase your odds of outperforming the market by investing in ESG companies. Essentially, environmental sustainable governance companies on average outperform the general market. If you want a deep dive into why, how, and to what extent they outperform the market, check out this video on my channel. I dive deep into all the weeds to tell you the truth about ESG investing. Before doing that video, I had heard that ESG investing was a good idea, but I didn't actually know if it was a good anecdote or if it was actually true. So go check that video out if you want to learn more about why companies that score well in environmental sustainability and governance characteristics tend to outperform the market. Third, let's say you're still worried about how volatile the market is and you don't want to or you can't psychologically handle the whole dollar cost average and don't worry about it technique. Well, one area of investing that's less volatile than traditional stocks but still has good earning potential is REITs. According to The Motley Fool, the US Congress established REITs in 1960 to provide all investors access to income producing commercial real estate that was once only available to the super rich investors. The National Association of Real Estate Trusts, which was formed the same year, has been keeping track of historical return data for the REIT sector since 1972. And here's a table that shows the S&P 500's market returns versus REIT's market returns over the last 50 years. REITs on average have proven to perform pretty well and actually outperform the S&P 500. Now, to be fair, I'm not a licensed financial advisor, so be sure to talk to someone who is before making any big investment decisions. But I do have a lot of investment experience from my time at Goldman Sachs. And from my perspective, the reason why you don't hear more about REITs is A, because not every REIT sees these returns. B, some stocks in the S&P 500 or just in general have way outperformed these numbers. Like for example, let's just look at tech stocks for example. The NASDAQ has more than doubled from 2019 to 2021, which is way more than what REITs have done. 
and C, REITs pay you regularly, kind of like a dividend for a stock, which means you have to pay taxes on that, and many investors don't want to have to deal with all that and would rather just pay taxes when they sell their stock. And unless you've been living under a rock recently, you've probably heard about the real estate shortage in much of the country. And with interest rates rising, it will be harder to build new developments. So it's not unrealistic to think that this could be a good year for REITs. So if you feel like you want to reduce your risk but still make pretty good returns, a REIT might be for you. Before we go on to number four, if you're still here right now, you've probably enjoyed this video. And if you'd like to see more videos like it, consider subscribing. I am doing my very best to make the best business and personal finance content possible. So if you have any constructive criticism for me, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Again, I really appreciate you guys subscribing and watching this video. And now back to number four. Fourth, honestly, I think you should do this every year, but invest in yourself. This means working extra hard on the things that matter, work, family, health, and education. This year is gonna be stressful for a lot of people because there's gonna be a lot of layoffs happening. Spending a little extra time at work or just being more focused when you are there so that you can really go above and beyond will go a long way in keeping you safe from getting laid off. Is it a foolproof force field? No, but it is really helpful. Staying employed will allow you to continue to get paid and will continue to help you invest in your portfolio. If you need your paycheck and you don't have an emergency fund to use before you have to dip into your investments, keeping your job will save you thousands because all that red in your portfolio isn't actually a loss until you sell it. And if you have to sell your stocks in this economic downturn to stay afloat, it'll really hurt your long-term financial gains. On top of all this, taking some time to build your skills, whether that be through a class at a university, a class on Skillshare, or just taking part of a professional development program at your work can really help you be prepared for job openings if you do end up getting laid off, or better yet, if there's an opportunity at your current job to apply for a higher position. And finally, fifth, riches are made in recession. And if you're in a place where you have a strong emergency fund, your job is secure, and you wanna take some risks for some potentially higher rewards, now is not a bad time to invest in some of these really beat up names. How many times do you wish you could have invested in Tesla before it shot up or before Bitcoin was huge? Well, now these prices are back to where they were a couple of years ago. Do we know that they're gonna go back up? No, they could very well keep falling, but they could also rebound once inflation subsides and the interest rates fall again. Now make sure you do your own analysis on each company you invest in, but my thought is that if Apple is down by 30% right now, but it's not like any core competency of Apple is different, it's not like Apple's selling fewer phones or something like that, the price is largely just down because of high inflation, the Fed is raising rates, and fears of a recession. And so whether the Fed pivots in 2023 or 2024 or some other point in the future after that, I don't know. But inflation will eventually recede, and when it does, Apple and other safe blue chip company stocks will rise to their previous glory. Apple is a pretty safe example of this, and there are other less safe examples like Netflix, Zoom, Tesla, and other pandemic darlings. But I'm just saying that if you want to get really good returns, finding good tech stocks and investing in them could be a great way to maximize your returns once the fears of a recession subside. Now to wrap up. In 2023, the five things you need to know when investing are, first, dollar cost average in the market, second, pick ESG companies, third, REITs could be a good option, fourth, invest in yourself, and five, consider taking a risk on some of these tech stocks bouncing back. Now maybe you use three or four of these and leave out one or two. That's totally okay. Investing and personal finance related things are amazingly simple, while at the same time being quite personalized and complicated, and that's okay. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, be sure to hit that subscribe button and give this video a like. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.